one of Jesus' parables where he actually speaks of us. Let us read along together. We're going to be reading about a dozen or so scriptures. Read along with it. Then it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags of gold, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gave two more. But the one who had received one bag went off and dug a hole in the ground and paid his master's money. At the long time, the master of those servants returned and, and settled accounts with them. The man who had received my bags of gold brought the other five master, he said. You're entrusted with my bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. A man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you're entrusted with two bags of gold. See, I gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of how many, many things. Come and share the master's happiness. Then the master has received one more Let's go. 
called the rust factor. It's called the rust factor. You see, I've not been out there playing, not been out there doing what I used to do, so I've gotten rusty at it, and, and, and the skill set's not like they used to be. Well, it's the same way with us people of God. If you don't use it and you don't exercise it, you will lose it. What God has made available to every single one of you, perhaps you've never ever been told this before, God has given you gold. You say, well, Pastor, I don't see it in the bank account. Uh, Pastor, I don't, I don't see it in, in terms of what I'm doing in life. But no, what I am talking about, people of God, is your talent. Your, 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 your capability, the very things that God has put in on the inside of you is equivalent to gold. Amen. Very valuable gold is something that he's put in you that you didn't put in yourself and he calls it gold. Gold. These are your skills and, and your abilities to do things, to advance and to fast forward. The kingdom of God and God holds every single one of us yeah. responsible. I will bring my today to speak to some people that are interested in hearing these very words flow out of the mouth of Jesus saying, well done. <laughs> well done, my good and faithful servant. Well, well, well done. You, you, have, you have used what I've given you. So the rust factor simply put, use it or you lose it. Back in my days, I spent time in high school dances and going to various parties, and, and I used to be able to move pretty, pretty good. And so nowadays, you see me on the dance floor, you find me stepping on my wife's foot, and you, you find me moving out of beat. Uh, or hard to get in the beat. Why? Hallelujah. Because I stopped dancing. And so I've gotten out of step. I, I, I lost that, that, that momentum. I, I lost it because I was, not, I was not using it. You see, using our gifts for the intended purpose to the fullness provides meaning to our lives. I know I'm a pastor, but, it, but I, I've been called just like you. I've been created by the creator just like you. And the calling he's placed on my life, he's also placed a calling on every single one of you. And so he came in here today and did an audit of your life this week. And he simply said to you, Brother Kelvin, what did you do? For the talents I've entrusted in you, just this week. My question to every single one of us up in here: Will you pass that on? Will you, will you, will you, will you, will you pass the on it? You see, we we wander aimlessly, living through this life. But your greatest, your greatest asset is using your skills and abilities Hallelujah. for the kingdom of God. That's your greatest. That is your greatest asset. I, I know you may want to hear something else. Everyone has a, a purpose in this life to fulfill. Do you think God will allow you to continue to hang around breathing his oxygen in, sucking up all of his beautiful air, enjoying all of nature and everything else? Do you think God will allow you to just continue to live without any expectations of you doing anything for him. The reason why you are still alive is that God is waiting on you to get out of the rust factor and put your skills to work. Uh, you say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm retired. Well, you can work the telephone. You say, well, Pastor, you don't, under, you don't understand. I don't have a way to get around. You still can call and encourage someone else. You say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I work 12, 24 hours a day. I can't do anything. I, my question to you is that when the creator of your soul visits you in the middle of the night, do you think uh, uh, that excuse will be 
acceptable unto him. I will probably say people of God, it won't work. I will probably say people of God, he will find it to be unacceptable. More men fail through the lack of purpose than the lack of talent. Oh, we can, we can, if we begin to put down a list this morning of the talent that's up in here this morning, we will run out of paper. There's an awesome talent in here that God has given you, that God has made, a, made available to you, but God wants you, God wants you to use it. More importantly than anything else, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The advancement of, 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 of the kingdom of God. In Psalm 37, verse 23, pull it up on the screen, it says, the steps of a righteous man is ordered by God. That, that God orders your step. God desires to order your steps to direct you where he wants you to be, where he can use your life to the fullness, people of God. He wants to use your life. He wants to direct your life. He wants to direct your path because God is doing something greater than you can ever imagine. And what he wants is to get you where you're supposed to be so that he can use your skills and abilities for the maximum benefit of the kingdom of God. You see, God created each of us for a specific purpose. God has a design for you. He has a design specifically for you. Uh, your, your desires, your skills, your experience, your spiritual gifts, these are all designated to be used for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Even your very child. This may bust the bubble, but why not? I got a, I got the word of God. I'm gonna put it right into the bubble and bust it. <laughs> your income, your number one reason for your income is first to advance the kingdom of God. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, people of God, if it's doing nothing to advance the kingdom of God then what kind of message we're sending to the, the, the king of our soul. We're saying that everything else in this life is more important than the advancement of your kingdom. You see, the kingdom of God comes first before anything else. There have been so many times in this life well, that I've had to put, the, to the, put the ministry and the kingdom of God before everything else. But one thing for sure, people of God, we've never gone lacking. We've never gone lacking. We've enjoyed the experience and the benefits of the, of the abundance of God because we have done that. And some of you think, well, you should do that. You're the pastor. No. Remember what I said earlier? I was created just like you. You, you cut me out, bleed just like you. I get tempted just like you. It, it's not anything about the office. It's about how you were created and what you were created to do for God's kingdom, for God's kingdom, and for God's kingdom. And let the church say amen. 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 The, God does great things and God does awesome things for his people to show his loving kindness. And it's God's desire, it's God's desire to mold and make us into a vessel fit for his youth. Notice Isaiah the prophet breaks it down like this. He said, but now said the Lord, he who created, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Let the church say amen. amen. You are mine. God says you belong to him. God says you belong to him. It's not about me. It's not about you, but you belong to him and, and the day will come when he will call you back unto him.
gave how many? Two. Two. And he gave how many? One. Now you would think mm. that the one that he gave one to, that there was no expectation. Mm -hmm. But the expectations were very high because the, the, the one was just as great as great as the five. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what did he do with the one? You see, sometimes we take our skill sets and our talents to do for ministry, and we downplay them. We 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 make them feel we, we we feel like they're small and they're not important. But to God, the question is, what will you do with what He's already given you? You see, some of us here, God can't bless you with a million dollars because if you saw a million dollars in your account, this afternoon, you. You may very well go off and buy yourself a red BMW convert and spend next Sunday cruising up and down South Beach like you done lost your mind. So God can't give it to you. He can't give it to you. But I came by to speak to some folks that God didn't give it to you, that you were used for the advancement of the kingdom, that the world would know as a result of God blessing you that Jesus. And well, give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, Hallelujah. Paul writes, he says, To each is given the manifestation Hallelujah. of the Spirit of God for the, for what? For the common good. If you're able to the left or to the right, it's not blessed because of how God blessed you. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Your skill sets, your talent is useful for the body of Christ. For the body of Christ, we, we must not misunderstand it. The Holy Spirit has given each of us special ways of serving each other. You see, the church is fully equipped to do great things for God. The church is fully equipped. You say, well, Pastor, I, I don't see it. Perhaps it's in you. And then you're not allowing it to work. You see, the supernatural works of God is often manifest through the people of God. The supernatural works of God is often manifest in the people of God. God reward those who use their gifts. Right. Amen. It's been said, the Bible uh, uh, confirmed it, too much is given what? Say that one more time. Too much is given. Too much is given. So you got all of this stuff. You got all of these skill sets. Mm -hmm. The more you got, mm -hmm. the more God required of you. Mm -hmm. You see, the way I was wired from the day I was born is that I was born high energy. And, and, and for years, I got myself in a lot of trouble because of my energy. Even at the age of 56, most of you in here could not hang around me one day. I'll burn you out. <laughs> I will burn you out. But that's how I've been wired. I don't expect for you to, to roll like I roll because that's how God created me. Okay. But before I came to Christ, I was forever getting into things that I was not supposed to get in. But once I learned, people of God, the, the gift that God has put in on the inside of me, then I, I endeavor people about every day to use it to the advancement of the kingdom of God. And I came by the day to tell you, you read the scriptures for yourself, uh, that your life and the very gifts that you hold, uh, the very gifts that you embody, God views it like gold, people of God. He views it like gold, but, but the way you work gold, you use it. You use it for the advancement of the kingdom. If you don't use it, it's going to disappear. It's going to disappear. It's going to disappear. Notice what happened. He says, I found those 
They use their talents. I found them to be faithful. Faithful. Some of you, you, you need to feel this. You need to understand this. Do you not want God to find you faithful? Wow. Do you not want God to find you faithful? Do you want God to say, I can't bless my dear sister. I, I can't give this to my dear brother because it will pull them so far from the Lord. It will pull them so far from the Lord. You see, one thing that material possessions, if you're not careful with them, they'll pull you from the Lord. Amen. You want the big house? You want the red convertible BMW? Mm -hmm. You want the dogs and the garages and all these things? If you're not careful, if you're not careful, they'll become a God yeah. unto you. They'll become, yeah. a, they, they'll become a God unto you. Yeah. You know, some, some years ago, and I, I, shared, I shared this story with you all before, but some years ago, uh, we decided to have more kids and we needed more room. We have a, a small house and, uh, off of Sherman Circle there in the Miramar. We decided we wanted more children than we know was in my office and but one room and the two kids at that time, they were already fighting with each other. My space, my room, my this, my that. You all parents know that, right? The children just fight, constantly fighting. My bathroom, my towel, my this, my that. So we figured it's this time to get a, get a bigger house. And, and so we went and looked at some homes and we finally found one that we, 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 desired, we desired to have. But there was a price tag that was above our budget and, and, and everything else. And we went out one final day to kind of take another look at it. It was the same day that my father passed away. And so my wife just took me on a road trip. She said, let's just drive so you can clear your head and get something else. So we arrived and we went to, this, went to the same place that we were looking at. Well, we signed a contract and and about a few days later, everything kind of settled down. And I looked at the looked at the numbers that we would have to come up with, and I said, "Oh my God!" <laughs> what have you gotten yourself into? Oh my God! Mm -hmm. And so as time went on, the house was completely built. It was time to close. It was time to close. And we have been saving. We have been doing everything that we could possibly do to to raise the necessary money to to, to get into this house and. And it's just that everything was not leading to us finally getting every dime we needed. So I'm, I'm, I know this is for someone here because I've shared this story before, but perhaps you weren't here. Every dime. So I call the people up. I say, is there, a, is there a way for us to do the closing a week later? And the gentleman said, no, you cannot do the closing a week later. If you're not here this Friday, at this time, you will forfeit all of the money that you and so so we went to the bank and we emptied the account, we got the check and we we headed there. We were several thousand dollars short of what was needed. And so we came up in there a little discouraged and everything. And so we sit down with the guys. You know, every time I share this story, people God, I really want to cry. Because I, I, I know it was not me. I know it was not me. So we sit down with the guy and he, we give him our cashier check. We knew we didn't have enough, but that was all we that was all we had. We sit down with him, we give him, and he looked at the numbers, he looked at our check and he looked at the numbers. He said, I think there's a mistake. <laughs> we know our amount did not match their amount. That's all we knew. And uh, we're like, well, that's all we got. He said, no, I'm not talking about your check. Uh -huh. He said, look like they charge you too much. Uh -huh. And I, you don't owe me a check. Uh -huh. I owe you a check. Uh -huh. now, 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 I have closed. I have closed. Uh -huh. with about 10 homes in my lifetime. I never walked away from a closing with more than I came in with. That, 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 that usually don't happen. And so we 
And our pastor, we anoint every room in the house. Mm -hmm. Bless the house. We walk away, go to the other, go to the other place. A year later, <laughs> that same house mm -hmm. was being used to, to launch this ministry that we have right here.
But she got out of it. Mm. And she got out of it, and now she's no longer singing. And I heard her sing uh, recently, and I said, what happened? What happened, Yolanda? What, 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 what happened? Mm. She said, well, I guess I'm not using it enough. Mm -hmm. And so those great abilities that God has given every single one of us, that if you don't use it, the day will come. Well, you'll say, what happened? What happened? I used to be able to dance with the group. I used to be able to sing. I used to be able to do all this. And now you no longer can do it. It's rusted. It's, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. But every gift, every talent that we have has been ordained by God to be used by God. We want to have an invitation at this we're going to have an invitation before the end of our time here today. And I'm asking that every single one of us, that you have purpose in your heart to not rust away. That you have purpose in your heart to use what, what abilities you have that you would dedicate it, you would commit yourself to allowing God to use it for the advancement of your kingdom your brother, your sister to the left, to the right, have needs that only you can possibly meet. Your, your brother to your left, your right, that perhaps the only one that, can, can, that you can encourage. But you need to bring forth, you need to bring forth those gifts. Are you going to uh, multiply your gifts so that they can affect all others? Are you going to use it so God can multiply it? Or you're going to hold it. You're going to hold on to it for yourself. Amen. There are certain reasons why lazy servants fail at the task at hand. There are certain reasons. We can easily get lazy. We can easily get, 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 get very relaxed. And while there's nothing necessary, not, nothing necessary mm. in relaxing, there's nothing necessarily wrong with getting a good night of rest. There's nothing necessarily be wrong with getting in a recliner and hitting a button and laying back and enjoying and enjoying yourself. God wants us to, to, yeah. to do that. But the tragedy people of God, I think we when it comes down to serving God, mm -hmm. we burn ourselves out with everything else, but when it comes down to serving God, we take God's time and that's where we rest on when we need to be resting on our own time. You see, so why, how do we fail? How do we fail at at this task, uh, when we have little appreciation for the work of God, little appreciation for the work of God. If you understood the work of God and understood how valuable you are in God, then you'll put your skills to work. We have very little understanding of Jesus. We have no, no confidence in God using us. We have no confidence in God using us. And then, and then that we have a wrong view of his, of the master's perspective, God's perspective over our lives. And lastly, this is the last one. This is where all of us can easily fall in this one here. How many of you are ready for this one? How many of you are ready for this one? How many of you are ready for this one? So the last reason is, watch this, watch this, watch this all over the place. Watch this drop. Because we're Lazy. <laughs> Did that wake you up? There we go. <laughs> so it's all about the rush back to the people of God. It's all about God engaging you. It's all about you engaging yourself to take on the kingdom of God and, and allow the kingdom of God to benefit from your skills, your abilities, and your uh, your, your capabilities to advance. Hallelujah. And allow the kingdom of God to, to work for you. And so every one of us here, you're valuable. You're valuable in your own way. You're valuable in your own way. And God wants to use you because he's entrusted you with talents equivalent to that of gold. That of gold, Jesus used gold because he knew that, that, that throughout centuries of time, ancient time, gold has always captured the attention of me. When you hear gold, when you hear gold, it, it brings you on red alert because you're hoping that there's some gold.
for you. Amen. Well, I came by to tell you this morning that you are gold. You are purifying gold. And God wants to use you to advance the kingdom of God. Remember, God is no man's what? Debtor. Debtor. Okay. So if God is no man's debtor, that means whatever you do for God, guess what? He's going to do for you. And according uh, to the word of God, God says that, that, he, uh, that he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask. Hallelujah. Or thank people of God. Yeah. Above whatever we can ask. Yeah. Ask or thank. Mm. Above whatever we can ask or thank. Mm. Put your gifts, put your talents. Put it to work for Jesus. Jesus, you know, I've worked for many people. I've worked for many people. But there's no one that can come close to working for Jesus. I came by this morning to recruit for Jesus. <laughs> you see, in Jesus, there's, there's great benefits. In Jesus, there's no peace slips. There's no layoffs. In Jesus, when you fail, you don't get fired. But you get pulled up. And he don't put you in the back of the line. He'll put you back in front of the line. I came to recruit you up Hallelujah. for Jesus. He's already said that he's given you talents equivalent to gold. So I came to recruit you, recruit you up for Jesus. Yeah. You've been recruited today. He said, I don't want you to rush away. That he has an assignment for you. Don't rush away. You are gold. Uh, Paul says you're like a masterpiece.
He said, you can be happy. And not do this. He said, don't do this. He said, but if you do this, and you can be happy. This is for you. People of God, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I pray that each one of you, each one of you will find your place in Him. You see, I ask your past, I can pray for you. I can text you. I can beg you to come and get involved. But if you don't Have your perfect will in your way. Have your perfect will in your way. 